All right, as you can tell by the thumbnail, the title, I am gonna go through the most controversial video I'd arguably say that I've made on this channel, which is things I hate about Michael Jackson tribute slash performance. Now, ever since I had uploaded this video, I've received a lot of comments, a lot of messages, and surprisingly, there is a lot of traction because I've actually heard that a lot of people were talking about this video. I've heard that this video kind of resonated with a lot of audiences. I wouldn't say I've been outed, but I've been mentioned in a live stream of a fellow Michael Jackson performer. And funny enough, actually, when I performed at a birthday party gig, a fellow Michael Jackson impersonator actually came up to me and he literally said, I saw your video. And I literally gulped. I was just like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. But but he actually agreed with me, which is really surprising. And that also on TikTok, some user had actually made a expose video about me saying that I am a hypocrite. And it's funny because if you're gonna make a video about me, at least, you know, why, why, why would you restrict comment access? So I guess that, I don't know. But anyhow, this video is going to be me reacting to the video that I made. And to be honest with this video, look, I'm just gonna say it outright. I was a bit of a douche about it. However, there were some points that really resonated with people, which I really appreciated and they really agreed with it. But for me personally, that there is advice. Do as I say, not as I do. And you know what? I'm actually guilty of the things that I hate about mentioned in this video. So what I'm gonna do is I have another camera set up here and that we're just gonna play the video. I'm gonna stop and pause and I'm going to react to what I've said as well as add on some new things, so to speak. I'm not gonna make another video, you know, things I hate about Michael Jackson performance part two. I was going to make it and film it, but I thought, you know, there's nothing more that I can add to it in a sense. This video is kind of successful, so to speak, but you know, if I were to make a part two, there's no point to it because, because it's just me complaining for the sake about complaining. Now, context of the video before I go into it, this video was trying to emulate kind of like a teaching men's fashion slash alpha M kind of video. You know, as you can see, as a screenshot here. It's one of those, it's one of those, you know, flashy videos where it has like the thumbnail as well as like a clickbaity title. So it kind of worked that, you know, a lot of people have watched it. We've got 8,847 views, 210 comments, likes to dislikes ratio. We've got 340 likes and 29 dislikes. Now, as you can see that a lot of people agree with me, which is really, really interesting. And some people thought, you know, I had like the courage. It was kind of to hear my perspective and just kind of like hear my thoughts. And I guess like in my intention, this video was just trying to express my kind of thoughts that I just don't like about the Michael Jackson tribute such performance in our industry, so to speak. Look, I'm no expert. As you can see in my whole channel, I've made a lot of mistakes and that, and people call me a hypocrite. That's perfectly fine. I've made the exact same mistakes that I've kind of hate. And look, I get that people would say that, you know, put words in my mouth that these are excuses, that I'm excuses I'm covering up for myself. But you got to put in perspective that look, I'm not a professional Michael Jackson performer like point blank period I never said I was never stated in any bio or any anything that I was a professional Michael Jackson the best Michael Jackson number one yada yada Look, I've never said anything about it. And I am still saying it kind of like from an audience point of view as well as, you know, just a casual watcher of this kind of stuff. Look, I don't want to start shit with anyone. Most of the people in this community, they're really, really great. I appreciate your support as well as you guys are really great dancers as well as performers. And yeah, like I don't really want to start smack for the sake of starting smack, but you know, I feel that I feel that having another video kind of a follow-up video to this video, okay, I think I've said the word video too many times, would um, kind of, you know, air out some dirty laundry, so to speak. And um, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, let's get into it. It's a nine minute video. I have a feeling that this whole video is gonna be a very, very long video, but I'm gonna break it down into what I was feeling, saying at the time, and my thoughts in retrospect. So let's just get into it. Whoa, 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 before you, you know, dislike or comment so angrily down in the comments, you know, hear me out. This is just my thoughts and opinions. And um, let's get into it. What's up you guys, it's your boy Hayden Horn back with another video and today I'm going to be talking about, in my humble opinion, what I hate, hate with a passion about Michael Jackson impersonators, performers and anything and everything in between. So if you're one of them, you know, calm down, it's my opinion. However, this is 
thumbnail. All right, so I'm gonna stop right there. Um, yeah, so I knew that naming a video and as well as having the thumbnail with Michael Jackson, you know, well-known Michael Jackson tributes and impersonators in the thumbnail is gonna generate some drama to it. Even I got Michael Trapson on the live chat, you know, talking about him, but I actually never mentioned any of these impersonators. I actually thought in retrospect to change the thumbnail because the thumbnail that is happening at the moment isn't the original thumbnail. Um, I just thought that before people would comment angrily in the comments, at least hear me out, hear the video out. But um, yeah, it kind of looks like I'm a bit of a douche kind of being like, whoa, 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 I'm all the best kind of thing. Me saying, yo, hear me out before you comment anything because you know, there could be things that you might agree on, disagree on, and that's fine. That's what I loved about the comment section. Like the comment section, I actually look more forward than the actual views and the like. It goes straight up, people actually watch my content and that um, looks like people have watched the content. Things you might be mindful that, you know, other people might be thinking, but I won't say it to your face. So number one is thinking that you're Michael Jackson. Seriously, come on. Really? Look, pff, I get it, you know, it's the character and all that stuff, but you know, you're not Michael Jackson, man. Like, you're your own person, put some individuality into it. You're not a carbon copy of Michael Jackson, nor you're actually him. Remember, there's only one Michael Jackson, and you know, he kicked the bucket ages ago. So, you know, don't think that you're Michael Jackson. Like, what I'm gonna mention later down in the video, it's an ego thing, and it's also really cringy and embarrassing, and I'll get into it more as a separate pointer, but you know, it looks really stupid on your part. You know, you can only fool and lie to other people, but the only people fooling is yourself. Number two. All right, so I'm uh, thinking that you're Michael Jackson. Now, look, I still agree with this, but there are a few exceptions to the rule, so to speak. I just don't like, you know, people thinking that they are Michael Jackson in a sense where that's their only personality trait when it comes to the impersonating. Look, I get that you are Michael Jackson impersonator, but I think that some people take it way too far in a sense where the too much of the mannerisms, too much of the voice. And I think, I don't know, it just feels a bit too creepy so to speak i'm not talking about you know the actual dancing or singing or what they do that's fine but it's just when they do interviews or like just talking to people having a high-pitched voice i get it that you're in character but also a bit too cringy especially if they're trying too hard like does that make sense but i guess like some people they just do it way over the top and it just feels a bit too i don't know it just feels a bit too cringy in my opinion i just feel like it just feels like yeah you are michael jackson personator don't get me wrong but also but remember you are your own person at the end of the day and you know doing these interviews that's fine but also it's just like i've seen tribute artists or performers where they actually just have their own mannerisms have their own voice you know they act like themselves obviously in you know either full mj makeup or just no mj makeup having a costume but it's like when they're being interviewed they're they're being themselves and then when they're asked to perform or when they're required to perform boom the michael jackson character pops up which is really really cool my opinion still stands but but it differs in different situations is doing bad makeup like seriously have you ever looked yourself in the look I i'm gonna go get a mirror for you six and a half hours later like you see 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 look just look now what do i mean by doing bad makeup well i've got this listed down on my phone it's a big thing you know one is doing chalky as fuck makeup and that's really <laughs> okay so i'm gonna stop right here um, yeah, just doing really bad makeup in a sense where, you know, when I first do Michael Jackson makeup, you're obviously not going to look like him. That's point blank period. Um, I get how people, you know, practice look, which is great, but I don't know, in a sense where I think it's one of those things where even the most top Michael Jackson performers, they're still practicing and perfecting that makeup, which is perfectly fine. But some people's faces are not suited for Michael Jackson makeup or just... I guess the makeup techniques, it's not suited for their faces. And I don't know, some people look like drag queens more than Michael Jackson, or even look like, and even look like maybe Latoya. But um, yeah, I guess people just do really, really bad makeup, I guess. And you can definitely tell when someone does a bad makeup job, you can tell that, you know, even the nostrils. I don't get why people draw on the nostrils. They're like the triangle slits. I don't get why people do that. I mean, or just overall bad contouring and makeup. Like for me, I don't know, some people ask me, do I do the Michael Jackson makeup? And I reply with no, I'd rather be myself and be, I don't think I would actually suit the Michael Jackson makeup. I know that there's some Asian Michael Jackson tributes who do the makeup and they look fine. But I, I guess for me, I don't know, it just doesn't sit well with me, but that's just my opinion. If you're an African-American or a person with darker color skin, I advise for you to not to use white makeup on you. You look really, really bad and- All right, yeah, this one, my, opinion still stands. I just don't like the idea when people who have dark skin, they put makeup 
with lighter shades to look like, you know, post vitiligo MJ. I guess it just looks a bit... We never see a lot of early Michael Jackson impersonators, you know, Destiny era, Triumph era, um, Thriller era, so to speak. Um, yeah, that's just not as common. People just like to look at the bad onwards um, Michael Jackson era, which is kind of a shame because I really like those eras, but I guess for me, I guess in my opinion, it just looks a bit, it just doesn't sit right with me. This looks downright embarrassing. Seriously. Or it's exactly the opposite where we've got Caucasian people or people with lighter skin tones actually painting their skin much more dark. That's that's really weird as well. And also people who have lighter skin tones who are pretty, pretty on the back with their skin tone, they actually lighten themselves even more. Like, what? It looks really disgusting, guys. And you know, it just looks really, really bad. Like, seriously, do you think people are actually gonna take you seriously? Do you think you're ever gonna get a job? And for the people who are like, I spent five hours on my makeup. I am a professional. Like, seriously, have you ever looked at yourself in the mirror? It looks really disgusting and Look, I don't think you're Michael J. I think you're like something from a horror movie. And the next one is, you know, wearing crappy wigs. So yeah, with the makeup, I guess that, you know, it all, it all comes to practice, but what was I gonna say? I completely forgot. I literally had a train of thought right there. Yeah, I don't, I don't just, I don't get the idea how people even spend cosmetic surgery to look like Michael Jackson or, you know, get their cheekbones done, a cleft, Botox, yada yada. But I just don't, I don't get, I, go, I don't understand the appeal for it. Um, especially when you're forking over so much money as well as you're almost permanently changing your face. Yeah, I, 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 for me, it's not, it's not for me. When your actual natural color isn't dark, like I've seen Michael Jackson performers, the black wig and it's all like crazy, it's like a pfft, and their eyebrows are orange or like brown. It looks, I don't know, it looks really jarring. And you know, especially if you have blonde eyebrows and black hair, it looks really bad. And you know, I guess you can put it with makeup, but you have to do it really well because if you do it like crappy permanent marker eyebrows, it looks really bad. Like, have you actually looked at yourself? Like. I've seen, I'm, I'm going to be really anonymous here, but I've seen this performer and her eyebrows, they're really bad. It's, ugh, it's very ghastly. It's like, right, I'm going to stop right there. So I got a comment saying that this is insert name here. I'm not going to say it. I replied with, no, it's not because I've actually seen this performer in the flesh and that, yeah, my, my opinion still stands. It looks like a permanent marker kind of job. But yeah, I've noticed that a lot of MJ performers that I don't know, maybe it's just like a quality thing, but they often buy the AliExpress Michael Jackson wigs. And look, I get it, it's a budget, it's cheap. Some people just gotta make their hair look natural. I don't know if it's, you know, if they grow out their hair, that's great. I know some people, they grow out their hair naturally and they permanent and they take care of it. That's their own hair and it looks really, really natural because technically it's naturally their own hair. I just don't get how people buy like the AliExpress wigs off the bat and say, look, look at my look. It's just like, we know it's a wig, especially if your hair is like brown, just any color that isn't black, it looks very jarring. And especially with the hairline as well, I've noticed that some people like to maneuver like to maneuver or modify their wigs to actually have a better hairline or some people draw on their hairline, but they draw it naturally. I know some people literally, I know some people, they just literally go <laughs> it, it looks jarring because it's obviously like makeup. It's almost like it's tattooed on, so to speak. And then there's the wig on top. Like my opinion still stands on this. Like some people will say, look, new makeup post and it just doesn't look good. Did an acute angle and just wrote it with a Sharpie. It's crazy, it's disgusting. Like at the end of the video, I will put down, links will be down in the description below to buy a mirror, use the code Fontaine. Okay, that's me being sassy. Discount. But yeah, in a sense, wearing crappy wigs as well, like seriously, if your hair's like blonde, orange even, and you're wearing a wig, and the wig's not even high quality, you look like you just got it from the dollar store, come on. Look, I'm trying to remain anonymous as I can, but I know you guys are guilty of it. Like trying to help a brother out, and you know, I really want you guys to look your best, and you know, to actually get some performances, but I don't want to make you look like a clown. And the next thing is drawing nose slits to get a thinner nose. Look, if you want to pull a Navi, maybe you're a Navi in person, but... Yeah, um, like I've said before with the nose slit, this was posted by the MJ cast, and it, uh, look, that's basically what I said. No more triangular nostrils on your face. It just, you could tell, like, especially with certain lighting conditions, you can just tell that you got, like, eyeliner and just jabbed it. It just looks really ridiculous, and I've noticed that, although with the nostrils, with the triangle nostrils, conversely, people actually contour their nose to make it look thinner. So, as you can see, like, here, It'll look really, really thin, and then your nostrils will look really, really huge. It just looks really, really jarring. And, you know, I don't think Michael Jackson had that nose. Look, and I get it that some makeup features are exaggerated 
for the stage so people at the back can look at it. But if you're looking at the front or just having photos, like professional photos, it just looks really bad because obviously with professional photos, the camera obviously zooms in and you can tell that's drawn. It's not like meters away and then zoomed in. So it looks like it's kind of there, but it's not. But especially when you do like headshots and stuff that you can tell that it's been drawn. It's really disgusting and people like, they do it like up to here, it's pretty crazy. And you know, it looks really stupid. Like even within the different lights, you can see that there's like these two little triangles up your nose. It's pretty disgusting. Like I find it really funny because it look, almost looks like a drawn on mustache, but under your nose it looks, see, natural nose. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> Not drawn. Mmm. The next is putting on a MJ voice. Seriously, I don't want to hear a high pitched voice. Hey, hey guys. Hey. Seriously. Alright, that's me being sassy really again. Ridiculous. It's, I find it really embarrassing is because even when you're on talk shows or doing public appearances, like, hey, my name is John. Excuse me? I don't understand. Why? My name is Anna Salatina. Wait till you see the inside. Oh! Hey, John. I need to change my jacket. Yeah, most of the time when, uh, all right, I gotta stop right there. So um, I've touched upon it in previous of the video. I know that some people can really sound like the Michael Jackson talking voice. Don't get me wrong. Like that Michael Knight, like that Michael Knight talk show. He really does sound like him. Not gonna lie. There's other performances who really, really sound like him. But I just feel like I don't know. Is it really necessary? Especially if you're just having like a casual conversation or something. I don't know. That's just me. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. My name is Tim. And I'm a Michael Jackson performer. Like seriously. Like Look, seriously, it sounds so stupid. Like, just talk with a normal voice. It's cool. I understand some Michael Jackson performances, you know, when they sing, they sound like Michael Jackson, which is, oh, God tier. I actually saw Jeffrey Perez live and it does sound like him. For real. Oh, no. It was pretty good. But I feel that when you're talking, come on, seriously. I just find it really cringy. Next is having a know-it-all attitude or- right, I'm gonna stop there. Having a know-it-all attitude. It's gonna sound a bit hypocritical saying that this, that this video is saying top 10 things I hate about Michael Jackson. That's going in with a gung-ho attitude. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cop it. This video does have a know-it-all attitude. And that regardless of what you think, that all impersonators, tribute artists have an ego. And you can tell that they have an ego. Even myself, I have an ego. Some guy on Instagram might have an ego. Some guy on YouTube has an ego. Everyone has an ego. And that I might sound contradicting or hypocritical, but this video does have a know-it-all attitude. And some people might think that I still have a know-it-all attitude. And that's, look, we're all learners of the game. There is no top Michael Jackson tribute artist. Um, it's all just opinion based. However, I have noticed people online, specifically some people, not gonna name any names, they blow their ego to mass proportions and I'm just gonna leave it like that. But you know, I guess my final words on this is that don't claim that you're the best. Let other people claim that you're the best. That's it. Ego, which is a bit contradictory because I'm making a video of top whatever things I hate about Michael Jackson impersonators. You know, I'm just grilling everyone. But, you know, I feel that there are some Michael Jackson performances who talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk in a sense where they're like, yes, I am the best Michael Jackson performer, yada, yada. I am the best. No one can beat me. And then they start doing like all these videos of them not even doing the Billie Jean dance correctly. Like, it's crazy. Okay, this is obviously a jab. So, as you can see, mentioning Navi, haha, funny, what a cheap joke. This is one of the major examples of having a big ego. World's number one Michael Jackson impersonator. It's really a narcissistic thing and I feel that, you know, there are some underrated Michael Jackson performers who does the dances amazingly, but you know, they're overswamped by an overrated, hyped up talent which can't even dance a beat. Next is having not having the right costumes for the right Alrighty, so now we're getting to this point, not having the right costumes or dancing slash wrong clothing. Now, I am guilty of this, but but let me explain. So for my performances especially, they're not professional performances. They're mainly just open mic nights. Now, open mic nights, they are usually three song allocations or like they're 15 minutes to 20 minutes, so to speak. And that for me, in terms of getting like a good value Michael Jackson performance for myself, I will have to pack as many good songs as I can. And with those songs, they have to be, you know, costume allocated. Now, for example, now, for example, the recent performance that I did 
I'm trying to remember. And I'm not saying that I've done a lot of performances and I'm trying to remember. It's just, it's been a long time. This video has been scheduled. Um, but it was the history medley, yeah, the history medley performance. And as you can see that I was wearing the gold jacket, white v-neck t-shirt and the black pants. And people said that, you know, you got the wrong costume, you got the wrong costume, you're meant to have the gold pants. Well, the thing is, the gold pants looks disgusting, especially on me. It's, it's just really bad. It's really disgusting. So yeah, I gave these pants a shot when I was dancing and that, at first it felt a bit uncomfortable, but in terms of the spandex and inside, it actually, whenever I spun or even did like the real hardcore moves, I just felt like it was an air conditioner in my legs and it was actually pretty nice having like a cool breeze going up. Yeah, these pants are really bad actually. They're, they're really terrible. And I really don't recommend the History Gold Pants if you're just gonna buy it by itself. I prefer the black trousers with the stripe on the side, but like I wouldn't get this if you're not gonna perform History Tour era songs. I've seen some Michael Jackson performers as well as fans that just buy the jacket and that's perfectly okay. They have black pants as well. And to be honest, you know, it's a quite jarring look, but I think it's much more better than the, whatever this cheese string of a excuse of a pants whatever this is and just for any casual audience member look it looks a bit cheap but also remember i also did a history medley jackson 5 off the war thriller but i wanted to make the other songs the subsequent songs afterwards have kind of like a consistent costume and you know i don't have time to afford to get changed from gold pants to black pants so that's why you see the jackson 5 medley with the, the blue this is it shirt as well as the off the wall medley and thriller obviously with the with the green thriller jackets but but it's still remaining with that base white that white shirt and black pants aesthetic because for me the history outfit looks a bit cheap with the gold pants and not to mention that in some performances some performances such as this performance at the granny smith festival or just any performance that has such a high scale i don't have time to get changed because it's really like quick change song song it's a song after song kind of thing so that's why in smooth criminal i don't even wear look i just wear the white t-shirt because it's such a it's quick change between songs and that you know the costume changes i can't afford because i'm gonna lose time and i don't have a stage hand either you know it would help if I did have a stage hand but for me me selecting the costumes when I'm selecting set lists I have to think logistically as well not to mention the music if anything the logistics side of it overpowers the performance side of it because I have to think okay what's the next costume what what's it going to look like with the songs so on and so forth it's actually such a big thing for something that's so small I know some people are going to say oh you're making excuses yada 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 but you have to experience a faulty costume change in order to get it and for me once you just have a you know hassle-free costume change for the different songs then you understand I know that makes sense but that's why you see in most of my performances most of the songs are just the main jacket an accessory white t-shirt black pants because that's that's just a simple formula that i follow and it works dance well i've seen michael jackson performers like in their homes dancing in their pajamas like i understand maybe it could be for a joke or a fun video but like these are people like i am serious this is heartbreak hotel part 7 out of 27 in my pajamas look at me dance like seriously okay i, I can't really take you seriously like, even like a black v-neck and a black set of pants even looks better than, you know, dancing in your billabong shirt, tracksuit, like really bad tracksuits I'm talking about. Oh, we can't take you seriously. Which so this, this point, uh, I'm just basically talking about people who upload their Instagram or dance videos online. You know, dancing in their pyjamas versus, you know, a clean cut aesthetic, you know, you know all black or just white t-shirt and black pants. So some people might have misunderstood what I was talking about, but um, yeah, basically I'm just saying don't dress like a slob, just dress nicely. Next is not knowing to dance or if you don't even know to dance, you're just looking around pretty confused. Look, Look I'm just gonna say it. I'm guilty of this. I'm guilty of this, you are right. I don't know to dance, for some dances at least. And I don't have any excuses or things to talk about. I don't know to dance. And that's just probably a matter of me practicing. And, you know, I'm guilty of it. Some people have said, oh, MJ didn't do those moves in this song. But they're just grooves. They're just simple grooves and just things to just fill in the beats of the gaps of the song. They're still MJ moves, right? But, um, yeah, not knowing to dance or looking clueless. I'm just going to cop it. There's no excuse of me saying, oh, I don't know to dance because X, Y, and Z. I'm going to cop it. I don't know to dance. I just got to practice on my end.
that's pretty much it. And I'm going to make another video about this and it's going to be another talking point. It's going to say, just because you're accurate, that doesn't mean you're entertaining. And I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, that's going to be a video that's going to be filmed and edited in the future. But um, yeah, with not knowing the dancers, I'm guilty of that. And I'm going to, I'm going to cop it. I'm completely guilty of it. I just got to practice more. And just to top off, people were like, this is a work in progress dance. Like seriously, just learn the dance first polish it up and then post it as a polish routine. I hate it on Instagram where it's like, like I hate people posting random Michael Jackson dances. I'll be like, this is a work in progress and now I'm gonna dance. So what I'm saying is just on the other side of the spectrum, bit of a bit of a topic change, but there are people who, yeah, just learn to dance and they post it, but obviously the, the moves aren't there. Um, it's all just practice and coming from past experiences if you look at my first Billie Jean video on here compared to the latest one It's still not perfect. There are moves that keep on evolving keep on changing keep on fixing It's just all part of the developmental process and I guess it's a progression of the dance so to speak I I'm, Look, I'm not a dance teacher. I'm just it sounds like I'm pulling like words out of my ass but I guess that I still see people post on Instagram, you know, moves that are work in progress, but it's just more like a, it just looks a bit too sloppy, I guess. Like maybe, maybe save it for when you've mastered it and then you post it or something. Look, the reason why I say this is because I've seen Billie Jean done really incorrectly so many people by so many times. It's, there are some dance sequences that are classic that Michael Jackson has done over and over. But then when someone does it, it's not polished enough. It just looks a bit goofy, but that's just me. Post the dance. Calm down, doesn't matter. Just go slow, practice, finesse it, and then upload it. Look, I've seen heaps of this on Instagram. It's pretty funny. It's like a try not to laugh challenge. And last but not least, it's not being sharp when you're dancing. Like, I've... All right, not being sharp enough when you're dancing. Um, yeah, I'm guilty of this as well. Um, I've noticed that, and this is why I really like my performances to be filmed, not only to make a video out of it, but also for me to watch it through and correct some moves. Especially, um, there's a movement smooth criminal at the dance breaks, like boom, boom, ba, and then you go like that. You spin, kick, point, and then you do that, that move. I always bonk it, like, it's not sharp and it's always like, it's a completely different angle, so it looks really, really bad. When I've been, when I say it's not being sharp enough, it's not having that punch that MJ had. And there are some songs during my performances, it's because I'm just tired, full stop. And I just got to work my stamina, work on the strength. There are some songs that are performed at the end of my open mic night compared to the beginning. And you can tell that I'm like losing <laughs> the strength and the stamina to do it. So it's all just probably just a personal development on my end. When I mean not being sharp enough, I've seen people who don't dance without that punch factor to it. Like when there's a hit, when there's a beat, it's just like a, uh, instead of like a boom kind of thing. So that's just me. I'm no dance critique or anything, but it's just like, it needs that punch. People who do certain dance moves, like the points, some poses, a kick, and it looks really sloppy and half arts. What I'm telling you is just practice. Don't film, I don't care about the costumes, just practice. Practice dancing, look good. Always refer back to Michael Jackson, get a mirror, and you know, if you just practice and if you just don't focus on just making videos. Bit of a side thought. Um, some people dance like they're in slow motion, which is very odd. It's very like, MJ had control of everything in a sense, where like the sharpness, the fluidity, just all those aspects. But I've noticed that some people are way too fluid or in retrospect, way too rigid. Now, now I sound like a hypocrite because some moves, they are sharp. Some moves, they are rigid. Some, some moves that I do, they're too fluid. But um, yeah, I think it's just, when you're performing on stage or for an audience, you're gonna get tired, So, which that's fair enough. Like one time I had my leg cramp mid-performance and that hurt. You could tell, or like my feet would cramp. I don't know if it's the way how I dance or it's the actual shoes, but my feet will cramp after one song and then I would have to perform the other songs with a leg cramp. It just, it just hurts. And it obviously it's gonna affect the performance of the moves. But yeah, sometimes it's just one of those unfortunate factors during the performance that, you know, you wish you just didn't have that cramp or you wish you just stretched properly beforehand. And um, yeah, that obviously affects your performance. And just practicing and making the dancing look great, it's gonna look better. And that's all from me. You know, there are some pills that are hard to swallow in this, but this is all my opinion. I'd love to hear your comments down in the description below. 
Hope you enjoyed, like, and subscribe. And you know, if you actually found this video informative, I'm looking forward to your new and improved Instagrams or YouTube channels or whatever. Hopefully I've made you improve your Michael Jackson accounts and then, you know, you won't be on Australia's Funny Home Videos for the next submission. Hope you enjoyed, like, and subscribe. See you next video. Catch you around. And that's the end of the video. Now, yeah, if you've reached this far and you still think I have a no-all attitude, that's fair enough by me. If you think that I'm just a hypocrite, fine by me. If you feel like I'm a offender of the things that I said that I hate, that's fine by me. It's all part of the learning process. But I just want to make this video just to, you know, air out my thoughts. I know some people just didn't like the approach of the video, but um, yeah, I just want to just kind of touch base on this video because I know that I still get TikTok comments Still get Instagram comments, still get DMs about this. It's just like, I wanted to make a follow-up video about my thoughts about this video. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, hope you enjoy, like, and subscribe in the comment section. And um, yeah, hope you enjoy, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Catch you around.